So have you been thinking about playing the violin but don't know where to start? I think I'm gonna buy a violin. I'm gonna buy a violin. Here we go. In this video I'm gonna tell you six things you need to get absolutely right if you want to start playing the violin. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Ask Olaf the Violin Maker. I get asked so often, like, I love the violin, so what do I need to get started? So today I'm going to talk a little bit about what you need to get started to play the violin. So the first thing you need is a violin. Obviously you need a violin. You also need a bow, a case, a shoulder rest, a music stand, music, rosin, and a good teacher. Let's get into the details. So a violin, is there, you know, what kind of violin do you need? And this is something I really specialize in. I've noticed that when people have really good instruments, it's so much easier to learn than if the instruments are not so good. And, and what I mean by good instrument is not necessarily a really expensive instrument. You just need a good sounding, well-made instrument that has a good setup. And these kinds of instruments usually start at around maybe five, six hundred dollars. That's Australian. So in the US, that might be more like three, four hundred dollars up to maybe one, two thousand dollars, that kind of thing. If you can afford a slightly better instrument, it might be well worth just spending that little bit more. So the first thing, like I said, very important, you need the instrument. This is one of my nicer instruments, but I'm going to just use it for demonstration purposes. This is one of my Ziado violins. I've basically, I've designed this instrument and they're made exactly to my specifications from European timbers. So the price range is quite a lot higher, like it's in the six to $7,000 price range. But what you want to look for in an instrument is firstly one that uses good materials one that sounds good and one that's really well set up. I made another video about instrument setup, so it's probably a good idea to watch that video if you need more information about the instrument setup. You definitely want to make sure that the instrument sounds good, has a nice clear sound. <laughs> It's not fair comparing this instrument with some of the beginner instruments. So the next video I'm actually going to make is about the different types and price ranges of instruments that you can get as a violinist from beginner to very high level. So you need to make sure that the instrument has a, a, a good quality bridge fitted by an experienced luthier or violin maker you need to have make sure that the fingerboard's been planed and works well, that the string height and string spacing is right, that the pegs work well, that the sound post inside here has been fitted correctly, and that the instrument has good quality strings. But keep an eye on my next video where I explain exactly about the kind of violins that you can buy. To me, I think, you know, if you can afford it, it's always better to start on a slightly nicer instrument because firstly, it makes you feel better when you're playing. And uh, so always, you know, try and get the nicest thing you can afford because, you know, you want to get joy out of playing. So it's worth getting a slightly nicer instrument. You know, you don't have to spend thousands and thousands but to spend just that little bit more uh, you can get a nicer instrument but of course if that's not your budget you know any instrument with a good enough setup and decent strings will do you know the, the important thing there like if you really have no budget or a, or a very low budget the important thing is that you get an instrument that kind of works you know and there's some good secondhand instruments out there as well don't disregard that option okay so next you're gonna need a good bow so bows um this is one of my nicer carbon fiber bows but a lot of bows are made from brazil wood uh, cherry wood 
wood, Brazil wood, Pernambuco, and there are a few other timbers. What's important in a bow is that it needs to, obviously it needs to create a nice sound. It needs to have a good weight and a good feeling. Um, so you need to be able to create a nice even sound with it and it needs to be able to do what you need it to do like it needs to be able to bounce if it needs to bounce and it just needs to generally make playing easier um, as far as a case is concerned i just recommend a good quality case it has to protect the instrument against bumps and against the weather so it's good to have a water resistant, if not waterproof case. So I don't mean that you're gonna go snorkeling with that case um, or anything like that, but you, you want it to, you know, if you're walking outside and it's raining, you don't want the instrument instantly to get wet. You also want the case to be bump resistant. And if you have a really expensive instrument, you also want the case to be able to support a fair bit of weight on top like you'd actually want it to be able to support a person falling onto the instrument there's actually cases that you can drive over with a car and the instrument wouldn't break now these kinds of cases are fantastic if you have a, a valuable antique instrument uh, but for the lower end instruments you know that's that's probably not quite necessary and those cases probably cost more than the lower end instruments so the kind of cases um, you know you can get these really nice foam style cases um, they, they look pretty they protect the instrument well they're lightweight and they're strong enough they probably won't be able you won't be able to stand on those cases um, but they do protect the instrument this one red inside you can get blue ones and all sorts of colors but they protect the instrument well you can also get these cases as shaped cases from the outside they will look a little bit like this then you can get some nicer cases like the BAM cases the Gaywa cases uh, Mustafia and lots of other cases that are much nicer these have some kind of a shell that protects the outside of the of the case and the instrument and they've got really good padding inside what's important is that if the case gets dropped the instrument is is well strapped into the case and it's protected if the instrument gets rained on or it gets humid the instrument is protected and uh, and that it generally protects against accidents as well okay so the next thing you're going to need is rosin and just, you know, what's important is just a good quality rosin. You don't want to buy the really crappy cheap rosins. Uh, some instruments come with this really horrible rosin. This is a Melos rosin. It's, uh, this one's a bit worn actually, but uh, uh, there's lots of different types of rosin you can get um, that are good quality. So the next thing you're going to need is a shoulder rest. Now, not everyone learns with a shoulder rest. I personally play without a shoulder rest. That's how I learned, but I don't play a lot. So I, it hasn't really had an effect on my neck. Um, but the important thing is that you can actually hold the instrument uh, firmly uh, without holding onto it with your hand. And the shoulder rest sits at the back of the instrument like this. And uh, you basically put the instrument on your shoulder and then it keeps the instrument up. And it, 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 it allows you to stay really relaxed when you're playing. So what's important about a shoulder rest, it's actually the combination of the shoulder rest and the chin rest. What's really important there is that you're super comfortable. So playing a musical instrument is just not a natural thing. Like it's not a natural posture for humans to actually hold a, uh, hold a violin. So you, could, you have to try and make it as comfortable as possible. And... Uh, and so, you know, obviously the body is meant to be quite straight and, and the idea when you're playing is to keep your posture as straight as possible. And this is also where the teacher comes in. So that's the next thing because you're going to need a good teacher and a good teacher can teach you a good posture. So it's very important that you have a good posture when holding your instrument. So where can you get taught? You know, the, the, a lot of go-tos are, you know, online lessons. So that is one option. The problem with online lessons is that you don't actually get the feedback. The 
only feedback you're going to get is from yourself. So if you do online lessons, film yourself and use a mirror so that you can you get give yourself your own feedback. Uh, the better option would be online lesson by Zoom or Skype or something like that. Of course, you are, you have a video link with the teacher. They're going to be able to give you feedback. But the best way to learn is one on one. Uh, through a teacher obviously that at the moment that's not always possible but in a way that's the best way because a teacher can take a look as you're playing they can correct you playing and different people have different learning styles as well so that's important and the other thing that's really important about finding a teacher is find someone you love to work with like <laughs> find someone you get along with You've got to enjoy each other's company and you've got to be able to. So there's three things. So first, you've got to get along with the teacher. You've got to enjoy the music that they teach. And you've got to be able to work with their teaching method. So those are the three things that are really important when you have a teacher. I recently had a client who found a teacher and the first day he was an adult violin learner and he went into his first lesson and the teacher treated him like a five-year-old and the funny thing was that as he arrived at the lesson the previous student walked out and they were quite a small child who had been in tears they were crying as they walked out and then he walked in and the teacher treated him like a child. Needless to say, that relationship ended very quickly after one lesson. So it's important that you like the person, that they're nice people and you can work with them. You need to be treated with respect. Everyone deserves respect. And even as an adult learner, you know, you're only a beginner. So you're looking to the teacher for guidance, not to be ridiculed. Anyway, um, so the next thing you're going to need is music stand and music. Obviously, the music is is the kind of stuff that you love. And you're also going to have to have music that trains you in posture and in, you know, in trains your fingers. I'm not going to talk about that today, but the music stand I'll talk about. You know, you can buy an inexpensive folding music stand, which costs around $25 to $50. They kind of work like this, and they've been around for many years. They, they fold up nice and small. This one's a bit colourful. I went with the... Um, clown version uh, but you can get it in black if you if clown is your, not your style and uh, so they unfold like this and um, really follow the instructions unfolding it because I've seen people turn these music stands into interesting sculptures never to ever work as a music stand again <laughs> they kind of if you fold these up wrongly they end up looking really bad and very bent. Anyway, these work like this and you can put your music on it. You can also buy some, uh, you know, some that don't fold as well. They're a bit more expensive, but a lot more sturdy. And then you can buy these beautiful timber music stands, which could be really nice if you have like a study or a music room where you practice. Also, remember to get a cleaning cloth and you're going to need a tuning fork or tuning app. Anyway, that's probably about everything you do. The important thing is that you have fun when you're playing the violin. The violin is such a beautiful instrument and you just got to have fun playing it. If you're not having fun, you know, you're, you're, some, you're doing something wrong. You've either got the wrong teacher, the wrong music, you're hurting, being hurt, you've got a bad instrument or something's not working. Anyway, so now you know what you need when you start playing violin. Now, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe and hit the little bell so you find out every time I post a new video. And it has been statistically proven people who subscribe to my videos are better violinists. So it's absolutely worth doing it. You'll be better. I don't know how true that is, but anyway. Thanks. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. The next one I'm going to do is about a, the kinds of instruments you can buy if, uh, if you're a player. So it's going to be a really interesting one. Anyway, great to see you and see you next time. Bye.